Hello, I'm Fast Lawyer with Oculus Rift Reviews, now with Windows Mixed Reality as well. Today we're going to do a review for Alice VR, a game released on the Steam Store on October 27, 2016 by developer Carbon Studio. It's a game that normally retails for $9.99 now, however, when it first came out, it was retailing for $24.99, and there is a reason for that big price drop, which I'll get into a little later. It's not just because it's from 2016. Uh, this game is for the Valve Index, the HTC Vive, and the Oculus Rift. However, I can confirm it does work on Windows Mixed Reality. However, big however, track motion controllers don't really work on the Oculus Rift or Windows Mixed Reality. You have to use a gamepad. Now, there is conflicting stories on the Steam forums. My personal experience is that they didn't work at all. If you try to use motion controllers, it would crash. Some people say that if you wait to the end of the intro splash screen, that they'll work fine. That wasn't my experience. My experience is that it crashed no matter what. And that's okay because gamepad, the track motion controllers are basically just used as a gamepad anyway. So you might as well just use a gamepad. Uh, Alice VR is a walking simulator in space with very light puzzles and it has an Alice in Wonderland uh, part of the story of Alice in Wonderland. It has some of the characters from Alice in Wonderland. It has the uh, inspiration from Alice in Wonderland. This is a game that I probably would recommend if it wasn't for all the bugs, but because of all the bugs I experienced, I just can't recommend this game. I actually bought this game back in 2017 and I bought it for like eight bucks and change. This game has gone as low as $2.49 at that really low price of $2.49 or less. It's been bundled several times. If you're okay with dealing with several bugs and maybe having to play parts of this game in non-VR, then maybe I can recommend it for you if you just really love walking simulators and you love Alice in Wonderland. Maybe. But I just can't recommend this in general to, to anyone else. You know, if you're not willing to put up with a bunch of bugs, this is not the game for you. And I put up with all the bugs. I was able to finish the game. It actually took me uh, five hours to complete this game, believe it or not. Well, actually four hours and a half. Uh, you know, I did a restart. I actually played it a little bit back in 2017, but then I did a full restart. So yeah, four hours and a half to finish the game. However, I think two hours is just dealing with bugs. So I don't think the game is that long. I think it really just takes like two hours, two hours and 30 minutes. But I honestly think I spent an inordinate amount of time dealing with bugs. There were two sections where I was just totally, totally stuck and I had to look at walkthroughs online. Both times it turned out that the game was just bugged and it took me a while to get around those bugs. I didn't know how to get around my bug save. What ended up happening is I ended up trying it in non-VR and trying the game in non-VR actually fixed both of the issues where I was completely stuck in the game. There's two sections of the game and I want to explain it a little bit just in case anybody wants to play this game in VR and they come across these sections so that they know what to do and what's going on. So one section is, actually both sections are upside down parts. So both sections where I got totally stuck were upside down parts and I just went to non-VR. There's actually three sections where it might be bugged. Three sections that are all upside down or spinning rooms and they just don't work correctly in VR. So be aware of that. Uh, and like I said, this game crashes a lot. On Windows Mixed Reality, for me, it was crashing a whole lot more than when I played on the Oculus Rift. Luckily, it does have somewhat generous saves, so usually I wasn't having to backtrack a lot. But yeah, it was very annoying having to restart the game after a crash. I think I would have enjoyed this game. The story isn't the best. So the puzzles are very simple, very casual. You should have no problems at all with the puzzles. And it's very narrative driven, but the narrative is kind of confusing. It's not very cohesive. Sure, there's parts I enjoyed. The visuals are very trippy. Uh, this game just gets weirder the, the, the more you play it. You're, you're just going down that rabbit hole and seems to go deeper and deeper and it just gets weirder and weirder. 
However, the story never really, uh, you know, never really goes anywhere. And you have no idea what your motivations are. Most of this game, you're just looking for this fuel and you're helping out this person, but you really have no motivation to do so. So I'm confused why. And yeah, the just the story wasn't very cohesive for me at least. So usually with a walking simulator, with when the gameplay isn't all that great, you're you're looking for a strong narrative to really carry the experience. And for me, well, yeah, there were certain parts that I enjoyed, and some of the visuals were like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Just the narrative itself wasn't strong enough to hold my interest. Plus, all the bugs I experienced, I just can't recommend this game. Uh, I'm gonna give this game a 3.5 out of 10. I honestly think I would have recommended this game without all the bugs. I wouldn't have scored it high. Maybe I'd have given it a 6 out of 10 at the most. But with all the bugs I experienced, having to play it outside of VR just to get around those issues, I just can't recommend this game for most people. So I give it a 3.5 out of 10. I'm Fast Lawyer. If you like my review, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.